Hello, everyone. Okay. I want to quickly um, explain the 15 Furnish Rules for Sweden and Spelling. As someone requested that we do that, um, I'm going to explain it, the 15 Furnish Rules for Reading and Spelling. There are so many rules that we need for us to be able to spell correctly. We need to follow some rules of the spellings, okay? Because when kids and adults learn to read, they are connecting how words sound to how those words are represented by letters. We have the letters and we have the sound. When kids or maybe when an adult is learning to read, they are trying to connect how those words sound and how those sounds are represented by letters. So what we hear is the sound and those sounds are represented by letters. So phonics instruction helps us to make those connections. It teaches, phonics instruction teaches spelling patterns and spelling rules. It teaches about parts of words we call syllables. You know, learning common syllables pattern can help people become better readers and spellers. So there are so many way, things we need to learn about syllables. But before we move to the before we move to the 15 important rules to know, okay, let me quickly explain what syllables are. Syllables are units of sounds in a word and are often made up of vowel sounds. Units of sounds in a word and they are also made up of a vowel sound. It's accompanied by, always accompanied by a consonant. But let me break it down more for us to understand. A syllable, a syllable is a single uninterrupted sound produced when pronouncing a word. Let's say for example, when we want to pronounce a word elephant, there are single uninterrupted sound we produce when we are pronouncing that word elephant. For example, e le fans so the units of sounds in a word all those things are this is what we call syllables let me talk about the vowel sound every syllable has a vowel sound it can be a single vowel or a vowel combination consonants may proceed or follow the vowel sound forming the onset of the syllable. Let me give you an example. One syllable is, for example, in the word cat. We have one syllable with the word, in the vowel sound, ah. We have two syllables as well on the word happy. The two syllables with the vowel sounds, ah and e, happy. These are, these are the two syllables. We have three syllables in the word like elephant. The three syllables with the word sounds e, e, a, like e, le, fans. We are going to learn more about syllables by counting them. You understand? When you want to teach a syllable to your child, you have to tell the child to clap or tap for each distinct sound in a word. For example, each clap or each tap represents a syllable. For example, that particular word, elephant, when you clap, you have or tap, elephant. So tell your child to clap or to tap to be able to know the distinct sound in that particular word. Then we have um, coming to vowel combinations. Some syllables have more than one vowel, and this vowel combination can create a single sound. For example, in a word like uh, boat, 
the O creates one sound. That is the vowel combination. So we should take note of that as well. And um, look at the open and the close syllables. We have a close syllable and we have an, an open syllable. A close syllable ends with a consonant. It ends with a consonant, making the vowel short. For example, cat, cat. You can see that the vowel sound is being closed with a consonant and it makes it a short vowel. That is why we'll be able to say that that A sounds A ah, because it is closed with a consonant. That is a closed syllable. The second one is an open syllable. It always ends with a vowel, a vowel. And once it ends with a vowel, the result is a long vowel sound. For example, go. The O there is a long vowel saying the name O. He. The he, the E there is saying the name is a long vowel sound. Okay. All right. So we need to engage more in activities like playing word game with your child, reading books with emphasis on clapping out syllables and you know, gradually progressing to more complex words when we are teaching our children about syllables. But don't forget to keep it interactive and fun to make the learning about the syllables and engaging experience for your child. So let's quickly look into these 15 important rules to know more about the important rules we have. The first I'm going to talk about here, the rule number one is the vowels in syllables. Vowels in syllables. Every syllable of every word must have at least one vowel sound. Every syllable of every word must have at least one vowel sound. A vowel can stand alone in a syllable. Yes, it's, it's quite possible as in the word Unit, you, need. That word has two syllables. You, need. So that's a vowel there. It's standing on its own, and it's also a syllable. Another one is a, e, ma, an, e, ma. It can also be surrounded by consonants as well. Let's say, for example, jets. Napkin and fantastic. So every syllable of every word must have at least one vowel sound. Now let's look at the rule number two. I believe we are you know, we understand that the vowel in syllable there must be a vowel in a syllable. It can be long vowel or short vowel, but every syllable must have at least one vowel that is the rule number one the rule number two is short and long vowel short and words the short and the long vowel all right vowels can make different sounds the sound that make that they make depend on where they are found in a word every vowel can make different sound the sound they make depends on where they are in a word. Let's say, for example, is the, the word followed by a consonant. If the word followed by a consonant, it determines if the vowel makes it short or long sound. For example, go versus God. Go is not closed with any consonant. It makes it a long vowel. But God ends have a, a sorry have a, a consonant that closes it and that makes it a short vowel like when i was explaining the syllables i thought about a closed syllable and an open syllable i say that the closed syllable must have a consonant that closes the vo the vowel and that makes this that vowel sound sounds a short sound the go versus the gods I just thought about now. The go 
doesn't have a covenant that closes that war well. Oh, but God has a covenant, a covenant that closes it, and that makes it to sound a short vowel. Oh, why go is O, a long vowel. Another example there is she versus shared. She, the E there doesn't have, follow any consonant, so it makes it what a, an open syllable. So it makes it sound his name. That is the long vowel. The shared ed has a consonant after that a. E. That makes it sound words. It makes it sounds the um, short vowel sound. The same thing as he, hi versus him. Hi, the I there doesn't have any consonant that follows it. So it's saying the name is a vowel, is a um, long vowel. But the hymn there is what a short vowel. All right, so let's proceed because of our time. When there is only one vowel in the syllables and it is followed by at least one consonant, the vowel usually makes its short sound. For example, each mascot and whisk cousin. This pattern is called a closed syllable because the consonant closes in the short vowel sound. All right? So when there is only one vowel and it is at the end of a syllable, the vowel makes it long sound, as in he and banjo. Banjo. Mm -hmm. So this pattern is called an open syllable. Syllable, sorry. Now let's move to the third um, rule. Okay. The third rule we have here is the silent E. The silent E. Okay. When E is the last letter in a word, and there is only one other vowel in that syllable. The first vowel in that syllable is usually long, and the E is silent. Do you get it? When E is the last letter in a word, and there is only one other vowel in that syllable, the, the, the first vowel in that syllable is usually long. The E is silent, as in sail, sail, okay? That E there is silent. Why that A is saying the name is a long vowel? Another example is inside, inside. The E is silent because it stays at the last, the end of the word. And it also have another vowel in that particular syllable. So this symbol pattern is what we call vowel consonants E. Okay. Let's move to the next one, the next rule. Okay, but you know, some teachers may call this um, silent E rule. Some call it magic E rule. Yeah. The E gives all its power to the other vowel and makes that vowel use its long sound. It says the name. Okay? All right. So let's move to the fourth rule, which is what? The consonant blend and digraphs. The consonant blend and digraphs. Digraph is a fancy word for two letters that present one sound. Digraph is a fancy word for two letters that represent one sound when we have two letters that represent one sound it is called what a digraph two letters that represent one sound let's say for example the word sh Sh. it has two letters but it represents one sound we call it digraph so in a digraph with a diagram that is made of consonants, the consonant works together to form a new sound. Hmm? Yeah, the two of them work together to form a new sound. So example is include, you know, chap, sheep, thin, whiz, photo. 
The consonant blends are different. These groups of two or more consonants, they work together. But unlike diagrams, their individual sounds can still be heard. Okay? When we talk about consonant blend, the two individual sounds, they can still be heard as they are blended together. Let's say, for example, um, clam, cl, gr, skr. These are words, consonant blend. The group, the group of two or more consonants that work together. Hmm? Unlike the diagraph, like diagraph, they, 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 they make one and a different sound. The, the two consonants come together and make a sound. But consonant blend, you can still hear the individual individual sounds. You can still hear them when you are blending them together. Like CL, CL, GR, GR, GRAPS, CLAP, and so many of them. Yeah, so the, fi the fifth one here is vowel digraph. Vowel digraphs. We have vowel digraphs, drills. In this uh, vowel digraph, the two vowels are side by side. The first vowel is long and say his name. The second vowel is silent. Okay? When we have two vowels together, when two of them are working together, the first one is saying the name, while the second one is silent. That is another important rule. Let's talk, for example, the word boat, B-O-A-T. The O-A there, their words, vowel digraph. So the two of them, they go working together. If the first one is saying the name, why the other one is silent? Is another important rule to start early teaching um, to start teaching a child early. So sometimes, sometimes two vowels work together to form a new sound. This is what we also call a diphthong. Hmm? For example, the word cloud, out. The O U there, out, is what we call diphthong. They work together to make a new sound. Okay. Is not a vowel diagram, but it's a diphthong. Ow, o u, oi, boy, boy, oi. So when you follow this um, uh, lesson in that Telegram or Google Drive, follow it. You will see how I did all those things. The practical way you can use to teach your child to read. So the next one is R controlled vowels. R controlled vowels. When a syllable has a vowel that is followed by R, the vowel is controlled by the R and make a new sound. Okay? When any syllable has a vowel that is followed by R, when a syllable has a vowel that is followed by R, the vowel is controlled by that R and makes a new sound. Let's say, for example, the word car, car, broad, germ, form, hot. This rule is sometimes called bossy R, okay? Because the R bosses, the forward, uh, it bosses the forward to make the new sound. Hmm? It makes the forward to make it to make a new sound. Car, broad, germ, form. So we call them R controlled vowel, okay? The next one is the sure, right? The seven is the sure sound. Any vowel that any vowel can make the sure sound. It sounds like a weak or oh, or oh, a was like from final have the sure sound. So words have more than one short sure sound, like apartment, banana, is the most common sound in English language. So the next rule, rule number eight is our soft E and our hard E. The soft G and the soft and the hard G. 
This one is when the letter C is followed by the vowel E, I, or Y. It usually makes it soft sound. You know the vowel sounds we have are A, E, I, O, U. Sometimes Y. Sometimes Y is what in forward. So when the letter C is followed by those vowels E, I, or Y, it usually makes it soft. It makes the C soft. For example, in the word sense, secus, cyclone, you say that, that um, C follows E immediately, and C follows I in secus, and C follows Y in cyclone. So it makes it words, it makes it um, soft. So with other vowel, the letter C makes a hard sound, as in cats, cords, but in E, I, or Y, it makes it soft. Likewise, when the letter G followed by the vowel E, I, or Y, okay, it usually makes it soft sound. Example of that are gel, giant, and gym. So with other vowel, the letter G makes a hard sound, like gas, gorilla, and yogurt. But in E, I, or Y, it makes what? Makes a soft G, all right? So the next room, the next one is what? Okay, the num room number nine is the F S Z L room. The letters F S Z and L room. They are usually doubled at the end of a one syllable. They are usually doubled at the end of what a word, a one syllable word, immediately following a short vowel. Let's take for example the word stuff. You know, it is at the end of one syllable. Stuff. And it's immediately followed by what a short vowel sound. That's what stuff. The short vowel sound there is what all. Okay? Then the, the F there doubled itself because it followed the last syllable in that word. The next example is grass. Grass. So that A there is a short vowel and that is one the last um, the last syllable vowel in one syllable. So it, it doubled the S. The same thing with the Z and the L. Okay, so assumption to that we have peace, boss, but all other ones follow that particular rule. All right, so number 10 is in ending in K or <coughs> ending is K or CK. That is number 10. So when a, a, when a one syllable word ends with K, ends with K sound. Immediately following a short vowel, it's usually spelled with CK. Okay? When it follows with a short vowel, when that sound k immediately follows a short vowel, it spells as CK. For example, C duck, D U C K, it follows the of, it follows the, the sound follows immediately the the vowel sound all so that is what makes the spelling to be ck the same thing as streak but when the sound follows a consonant the long vowel sound or the diphthong is usually spelled with k okay when it follows what a consonant or when it follows a long vowel or a diphthong it's spelled as K, like task. Task, okay? Cake, soak, hawk. All those things are example of that. Then the next rule is what? The J sound and the sh -j sound. In one syllable word, when a J sound immediately follows a short vowel 
is spelled J D G E as in badge, hedge, bridge, dodge, and smudge. So the D protects the vowel from the magic E rule. Okay. So in one syllable word, when a ch sound immediately follows a short vowel, it's usually spelled as what T C H, as in catch, fetch, stitch, blotch, and clutch. Okay. The exception to this rule are much, rich, which, but it follows that particular rule. When one syllable word immediately follows a short vowel, we spell that as in T C H. Okay? So let's move to the twelfth one. The drop the E with I N G. You have to drop the E with I N G. When words ends with a silent e, drop the e before adding ing. For example, bike. You know it's a silent e. There's a silent e there in bike. So drop that silent e and put ing. Okay. Bike, biking. Give, giving. Dodge, dodging. This rule also applies to other surfaces that start with vowel like um, ed, er, ebo, and ous. Okay, for example, grief, grievous, excite, excitable, hope, hoped. So you drop the, the e and put the word, the correct surface there. Okay, so the next one is Dublin. Dublin in a in a one syllable word like win, where one short vowel is followed by one consonant, double the consonant before adding the suffix that starts with a vowel. For example, winner, winning, winnable. So you need to double the the vowel, sorry, double the consonant before adding the suffix. When one syllable word like win, hmm? where one short vowel is followed by one consonant. When you are adding the suffix there, you double the consonant. Okay? Alright, so number 14 is plurals. The plurals rule. For most words, add S to make them plural. As in cats. The plural of cats is what cats. You add S to them. But when a singular word ends with S, S H C H X and Z. It ends the plural the, the plurals ends with what E S. It makes it plural as in classes, brushes, foxes. Okay, that's the rule. The last rule there is the Y rules. The Y rules. To make plural a word that ends in a vowel immediately followed by Y. Just add S, okay, as in toy, toys. Those plural that ends in a vowel immediately followed by Y. So put S there. When Y immediately followed by a consonant, the Y would change from I, that would change to I, um, I E S, okay? It would change that Y to I, then you add E S to it. For example, family families you remove that y and put i then comes in putting es okay pony ponies treaty treaties so to make plural a word that ends in a vowel mainly followed by y add s but when that word followed by a consonant hmm, you change that y to i then put es to it Example family. You see that you remove the, the Y there because it follows um a, a vowel. Sorry, it follows a consonant. But when it follows a con a vowel, you just put your S. Don't remove the Y. But when that Y follows a consonant, for example, that word family, the L there, L there is what a consonant. So you remove the Y, put I E S. The other one is pony. The the Y follows what a consonant. So you remove it and put I E S. 
But in the other way around, we have toy, T-O-Y, that is called vowel. So when the Y follows after a vowel, you don't have to change the Y. You just put S, like boy, B-O-Y. You don't need to change it because it follows a vowel. So that's the rule. All right? So that's the 15 rules we have in English language for now. So exception to the rules, most rules in English language follow furnish rules. Okay? So you have to follow the furnish rule exception to the though these spelling rules i've just said now but any exception to use rules need to be taught and memorized for reading and spelling those words are often found in the list of sight words there are words that you can be able to decode those ones we call them sight words some call them tricky words or high frequency words so let me give you some spelling rules that students should know. Hmm? The rules that your young your little ones should know. Hmm? So because we have to start from the little. So let me list those ones. Number one is that every syllable has at least one vowel. Okay? You tell them that every word has at least one vowel and every every syllable has at least one vowel. The next one is C can say K or C says before A E I Y. I've said it before. The same thing as the soft G and the soft C. Okay? So Q, Q is always followed by U. The child should know that. That is Queen. Then double the consonant F, L, and S at the end of a one-syllable word that has just one vowel. I say that as well. So to spell the word K at the end of a word, use CK. Okay? Okay. You use CK after a short vowel. But after everything else, you use what? K. But after a short vowel, you use what? CK. Okay. All right. So I believe um these have been of great help to you. Keep practicing. Keep teaching your child to read. If you have any specific um spelling rule that you want us to talk about or you don't really understand, please call my attention while we talk about that in details. Okay. Thank you for listening and bye. See you.